Tonight on CTV News, we get an inside look at the whereabouts of the ASCSU presidential and vice presidential candidates. Plus, we talk about edibles and what they can do to your dog. All this, plus weather, sports, entertainment, and more, starting on CTV now. Good evening and thanks for tuning in to CTV News Tonight. I'm Grace Reeder. And I'm Emily Biffinger. Tonight we start by taking a look at the ASCSU race. If you didn't catch our live stream of the ASCSU debate last night, we have the preview for, we have the preview for you. Three presidential and vice presidential teams spoke about topics like diversity and sustainability, while the Speaker of the Senate candidates talked about their vision for the newly created positions. Josh Silva and Michael Wells discussed their platforms, which mainly highlighted a new Ramride app. Nick Bond and Tristan Siren discussed a Middle Eastern Historical Center. And Haley Morton and Yuval Rosenthal discussed fun allocations and U plus two. Speaking of the ASCSU elections, our reporter Michelangelo Bustamante is hanging out with the candidates tonight as they speak to the students in the residence halls. Michelangelo, what's going on over there? Thanks, Grace and Emily. I'm Michelangelo Bustamante, and I'm live here outside of Edwards Hall. We're interviewing Kiri, who's a vice presidential candidate for ASCSU. Kiri, tell us a little bit more about what's going on tonight. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we're just running by to all the hall councils. We really want to interact with students, um, not only the students that pass through the plaza, but we're trying to reach out to those students that maybe don't walk through the plaza or are often um, unaware of the election going on. So reaching out to the hall council really helps reach those uh, freshman students, those sophomore students that still live in the dorms, maybe don't fully understand or interact with all the CSU opportunities. Awesome. That's cool. So what is your guys' platform and who is the, the other person that you're running with? Yeah, definitely. So my running mate, Eddie Kendall, uh, he's a junior here as well. Um, he is currently in the Hall of Council uh, talking with those uh, representatives. Um, but our platform really breaks down to the triple bottom line. It is environment, economy, and sustainability. Um, so environment really comes down to how can we better... Um, I guess, grow CSU to continue to be that green campus that we all have come to love. Um, it also consists of what can we do as if uh, we were elected to help um, kind of make it more of an environment for students and beneficial. So we really want to plant fruit trees. Um, the architecture uh, landscape has not been decided for the stadium. So by planting fruit trees, we would be able to have um, the horticulture students get education from that and also a sustainable way to provide food to the dining halls. Um, that can really connects to sustainability. Um, we want students to be able to afford food. We want them to not have to worry about books and eating and which one has to come first. Uh, food trees is just one option. The other that we are looking into is building a on-campus food bank. ASCSU, if you walk in, there's a lot of unused desks, a lot of unused computers. How can we benefit from that space that we're given? Um, the LSC provides a great environment to have that food bank because a lot of students are walking through the LSC on a daily basis. And then it comes down to economy. So. I kind of touched on it. They're all intertwined, like I said. So sustainability doesn't just mean environment. It means how can we have a sustainable CSU campus when we are told to go to college, but we're not told where to get those funds from or where to get that money and how to provide that to ourselves, being full-time students living on or off campus, holding jobs, things of that sort. So we want to try to provide um, teachers with the opportunities to really push for e-textbooks, to really have those opportunities to go paperless. Um, um, basically, we want the students to be involved, so our campaign is built off of what students have asked us to do, and we just want to represent the students that want those causes to be addressed, as well as causes that are really close to our hearts. Great, great. So, Kiri, tell us more about yourself. Why did you decide to get involved with CSU and to run for vice president? Yeah, definitely. So I am originally from Wisconsin. I came out to CSU. Um, my brother actually went, uh, sorry. My brother actually went to Denver University, so I definitely looked at the Colorado schools because I was always out here visiting him. Uh, we're five years apart, so 
not super close in age, but enough that sophomore year comes around to high school. He's still at DU. We have to start looking at schools. So I came to CSU. Um, I actually came when the fires were happening, so we couldn't even tour because it was so cloudy out. But as soon as I came back to visit in the Oval and the smoke was all cleared up, um, it kind of actually cleared up my mind too. And I was like, wow, this is my home. And this is actually where I've built my second family. Um, A lot of people that I've been in contact with here at my time at CSU face different issues, whether that is um, food sustainability, whether that is getting those resources for students, um, whether that's educational resources, environmental, things of that sort. Um, I felt a need that I could bring an outside perspective to ASCSU that a lot of candidates probably couldn't have. Um, I work very closely in the SLICE office, so we share a kitchen. (laughs) Um, I always like to say that. And so while I'm not in ASCSU, I know the environment, I know what I would be entering, and I know how I could improve that. Um, At the end of the day, Eddie brings the experience. He has over 1,500 uh, hours of experience in ASCSU, so my fresh perspective, his true passion about ASCSU and those hours put in, we really combine together, and we believe that we're the most qualified, and that's why we decide to run at the end of the day. Awesome, awesome. So when are the elections? The elections are April 3rd, 4th, and 5th. You just log on to RamWeb. Top right corner, go ahead. Um, I hope that everyone votes for us, but at the end of the day, if they don't, I really just want to encourage voting in general. But uh, feel free to look at our Facebook page, things of that sort, and if you have more questions, Eddie and I are always willing to reach out and talk to students. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kiri. Grace and Emily, it's been great to be out here. I'm Michelangelo Bustamante, live here at, here at Edwards Hall. Back to you, Grace and Emily. Thanks so much, Michael, Michelangelo and Kiri. She is very busy, so we were lucky uh, to get an interview with her. Um, did you see? Did you happen to catch the debates last night? I actually didn't get to catch it live, but I did watch it on our YouTube page. Mm-hmm. And I've also noticed all the candidates have been on the plaza all week. It's been it's been a crazy, hectic week for them. And our very own Willis Scott yeah. moderated that, so definitely go yeah. to our YouTube page and check that out. Mm-hmm. Fort Collins is known for its local businesses and in more recent years its seemingly constant construction projects. Located in Campus West by Colorado State University, the last standing local video rental store is beginning to feel some of the negative effects. Action, classic comedy. For over 20 years, Scott Shepard has been in the video rental business. You ever seen so many movies in your life? An idea that started in his living room eventually evolved into something much bigger, the Village Vidiot. It opened uh, back in 78, back in Kansas. I sold video games. I just started because uh, where I worked, I was a machinist, and a lot of people wanted the new Atari joystick video game machine. And I said, I think I can buy those wholesale. Although online video rental services like Netflix are becoming more popular, many people find charm in places like the Vidiot. We were looking up for something to do on a Saturday and we found out that they still had a video rental place so we had to check it out. The Village Vidiot is the only remaining video rental store in Fort Collins. However, its future is now a little hazy due to debilitating construction on Elizabeth and Shields. It just changed the traffic flow and when that happens we suffer. Um, I've talked to Wendy's, I've talked to McDonald's, it's not just me, it's not the little places. The big places are down. They just deal with it in a different way. Um, Everybody gets affected when you can't get somewhere. A roughly 40% drop in business has led Shepard to launch an online fundraising campaign to save his store. Somebody sees it and goes, I haven't been there in a year. And that's what's been happening. They're dropping by, they're renting more than normal. That's helping. The campaign has already succeeded in bringing in $10,000 in only 13 days. It seems like the community isn't ready to say goodbye. You know, it's just it's just a culture that I don't really want to see go away. Um, I, I used to love going to Blockbuster just like on the weekends when I was a little kid. So, uh, you know, I, I do think it's important and I don't want something like that to be lost. As far as Shepard is concerned, ultimately the construction is just a temporary roadblock to his lifelong passion. Circumstances beyond my control, you know, rent, building use, traffic flow, that all comes and goes, but we, I'll be here somewhere. That's about all I can tell you. With CTV News, I'm Bailey Leakey alongside Erica Schultz. The Village Vidiot just met its $10,000 emergency goal this past weekend and is now working towards the final $75,000 goal for more long-term sustainability. There are still eight days left to pledge on their campaign. 
For more information, go to thevillagevidia.com. Beyond the Label, a California-based company dedicated to shifting awareness of sustainable fashion, hosted a t-shirt exchange and upcycling lab for the CSU community. The t-shirt exchange gave consumers an opportunity to exchange a gently worn t-shirt for a new t-shirt that is sustainably and ethically made with the BTL Nutrition Label graphic printed on it. The upcycling lab allowed BTL experts to guide participants in a 10 to 15 minute t-shirt upcycling workshop, transforming t-shirts into bags and other reimagined pieces. For more information about reducing your carbon footprint, please visit sustainability.colostate.edu. Arc of Larimer County hosted its fifth annual Reframe Disability Film Festival Tuesday night. The event is meant to highlight the lives and experiences of members of the Fort Collins community that have disabilities. Ten videos were put forth for the event, but special talents won the contest. This month is National Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities Month. With the legalization of marijuana in Colorado comes an increase in the number of pets who are hospitalized after ingesting edibles. For one CSU student, that turned into an expensive and lengthy vet trip. Since the legalization of marijuana in the state of Colorado, the number of dogs who end up in the emergency vet for marijuana-related injury have gone up. We started seeing more and more and more cases, and it was the rise in cases was paralleling the rise in the number of dispensaries. For Kirsten Rosefell, a junior at Colorado State University, that became a problem when her dog got into THC on a walk. She was just laying on her bed in the car, and she was not, like, moving. She was really, like just out of it and I could tell like she was barely opening her eyes and she didn't want to go for a walk, she didn't want to get out of the car. It was just really, really weird. I've never seen her like that. Because the symptoms dogs show from THC are similar to symptoms of antifreeze or other toxins, the ER procedures can be lengthy. Because we were in the emergency vet for probably like at least five hours. And not to mention expensive. If it's a dog that's coming in for, they just ingested it and you're coming in as an outpatient, they'll probably induce vomiting. I mean, the emergency visit, the vomiting, probably would recommend observation overnight. It could easily be $500 to $1,000. The problem is that edibles, which taste good and are generally made of substances like chocolate, are toxic to dogs. I mean, whether it's pets or children, the edibles taste good, they're going to get into them, they're not going to know when to stop, and you just got to secure your stash. Just keep it above and out of the way, and if it's on the table, if it's where the dog can get to it, the dog won't stop until it's gone. Dr. Tim Hackett said that some of the symptoms of your pet eating an edible could be them stumbling around like they're intoxicated or drowsiness. However, symptoms won't show until around six hours after they've eaten the substance. If you do witness these symptoms in your pet, you should take them to the emergency room um, the veterinary clinic immediately. Or if you're not sure what they have consumed, you can also call the poison hotline, which is 1-800-213-6680. Remember in using these services that veterinarians are trained to treat your pet, not call the police. And we're not here to, um, to judge them. We're here to just try to provide supportive care for their pet. But the best way to avoid the problem, keeping your pets away from it altogether. Problems like this can be prevented, especially in states where like marijuana is legal, just by people really making sure um, that they keep all of their marijuana like contained. With CTV, I'm Grace Reeder. Dr. Tim Hackett says that he has not seen cases where animals are affected by secondhand smoke. CTV reporters did reach out to several pot shops in Fort Collins, and none of them responded for comments. That's all for news, but don't go away because up next we figure out how long the rain will stay. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 